Hey you doing everyone, greetings and welcome back to the basement. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of start my log on the little challenge that I set myself a little while back and that is to create a game using Batari Basic for the Atari 2600. So my game is going to revolve around Bob the Bitentacled Hedge Octopus and well this is quite a challenge for me because really I have very very little experience of programming but I wanted to show you kind of well at the beginning level at least how easy it is to get the grips with Batari Basic and I suppose the simplest way to show you that is with the first little program that I kind of half concocted uh, in order to show you how easy this stuff is to do so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a program here that will make the background color the background screen flash on an Atari 2600 It'll do nothing more than that but this is it this is the entire amount of code that you need in Batari Basic in order to make this happen. So the first thing, and I'll show you how kind of green I am to all this program and stuff. The first thing that surprised me is there are no line numbers being used here in Batari Basic. For me, Basic was always 10 print, 20 go to, 30 input, and that kind of stuff. Here what we're doing is we're using loops like we do with, I suppose, modern programming languages. So we've got our main loop that terminates down here at the bottom with go to main so we're constantly looping true now the main command that we're going to be controlling here today is our colubk command which is color background and it equals something so generally you would feed that a hexadecimal value and what value would you feed it well in the description below i've put a link to random terrain which is probably one of the greatest resources on the internet to Batari basic commands and whatnot. And what's included there are three charts that list the color schemes and their hexadecimal values for the NTSC, the PAL, and for the CCAM version of the Atari 2600. So you can pretty much plug a color in that way and get it to display on the screen. But what I've done is I've assigned the variable A to our color background. And then the very next thing I did is that I told it A equals A plus one. So it's going to increment the whole time. And therefore, the value of color background is going to change with each cycle and we'll get a different color on the background. Now, the next one you see here is draw screen. Draw screen is a command that's included in almost every Batari basic program there is. And the reason is, it's pretty much like pressing, pressing enter on a keyboard after you've typed in a command or whatever. The Atari looks at everything before the draw screen and puts it into memory somewhere itself. And then when it sees draw screen, it draws all of it to the screen. And it does this a number of times every second. And that's how we get our display on screen. So what's going to happen here is it's going to see the value of color BK and it's going to draw it on screen. Then the next cycle, it'll be after increasing by one and it'll draw that on screen and so on and so forth. So this is compiled and once it's been compiled, what we get on screen is this. So that is really how simple it is to make color flash on the background of an Atari 2600. And as a little introduction to Batari Basic, it really shows it's not all that hard to at least get to grips with at a very, very simple level. Now, what I want to do today is I want to show you how to create a sprite and to put it on screen and hopefully get it to move around a bit. So the easiest way to do that is to take a little piece of paper and I'll show you a quick way of sorting out a sprite and then we'll look at the code. Okay, so this is the fun part. Drawing sprites is kind of fun. However, we are always a little bit restricted. Any sprites that we draw can only be eight pixels wide. We can't go outside of that but we can draw them as long as we want. So we can draw sprites pretty much anywhere from one to eight pixels wide and anywhere from one to whatever the heck length you want long. So what I've decided to do for this little demo here is I've drawn a little skull. So we've got a head with two eyes and a mouth and I've stayed in a kind of an eight by eight square here just to show you what I'm doing. Now, to start coding once that we have our little design drawn out here, all you need to do is create a matrix. And it's pretty much an eight by eight grid here because that's what this guy here is. And any blank square, I've put a zero in. And any filled square, I've put a one in. That's 90% of our code there. What we do then is we take this matrix and we turn it upside down. 
and on the top of it we write player zero colon this all has to be lowercase and then beside each of these lines in the matrix that we've made out we're going to put a little percentage sign to show that this is binary data and then at the bottom we write in lowercase again end and that's our sprite code for Batari basic right there just done after that what, what we can do is like I showed you before we've got our color background here that we give a hexadecimal value to or we can give a decimal value or whatever to it there's also a color p0 command which is for our sprite here and we can give that a value as well so we can change the color of this guy and another thing that we have to do is we have to tell the Atari where we want this sprite to be displayed on screen so what we've got is we've got a player zero x position and we give it a value and a player zero zero y position that we give a value so the x position the value can be anything between 1 and 159 and the y position anything between 1 and 90. now so i've shown you the code with little skull there that we're hoping to draw and this here is the code typed in to our word processor ready to be compiled by batari basic so again we've got our main loop starting here we're after setting the color background we can also sell, set a color player zero and that is for our first sprite so our player one sprite really in this case so i've got player zero and i've got little matrix of ones and zeros down here to designate what we want the sprite to look like and then finish them with end and then like i said before we've got our player zero x set to 50 and our player zero y set to 50 as well so that'll line it up on our screen at 50 50 as far as coordinates go and again it's going to draw the screen and then it'll go back to main and run through the whole thing again so hopefully if this works we should get a little skull sitting at point 50 50 on the screen so here we go with our sprite test and there we go that's our little skull there on a more or less black background kind of a mustardy colored skull as we set the background uh, value and also the sprite value so that is how we can draw a sprite and how we can stick it on screen very easily now as we're trying to make a game for our little hedge octopus we want to set a hedge octopus sprite and it's exactly the same thing as you just saw there but the difference is that I've just changed the matrix here on the player zero to resemble a hedgehog with tentacles that's it everything else is exactly the same and when I run that what I get is my little hedgehog here on screen with his tentacles so we've managed to get Bob on screen but Bob is looking kind of lifeless and static so it'd be nice if we could give him a little bit of animation to make him kind of look like he's doing something even when we're not controlling them and thankfully Batari basic will quite easily let us do that because what we can do is we can in fact assign two two different uh, player zero sprites more or less at the same time and switch between them so that's pretty much what i've done here it's the same code again although we're after adding in a variable that's going to increment with every cycle so a equals a plus one now if a equals 10 then our player sprite our player zero sprite that will be displayed will resemble this so it's pretty much bob with his tentacles if a equals 20 then our player zero sprite will look like this so it's bob again with his tentacles but the tentacles are after moving ever so slightly and what i'm after throwing in here as well is if a is greater than 20 then a equals zero so that's so that the loop will always go from 20 to 0 to 20 to 0 to 20 to 0 and we'll always get animation on screen again we're laying out the player zero x position player zero y position and we're drawing the screen so that'll happen every cycle again and back to main and it runs the whole thing through again and again and again and what we should get on screen this time around is an animated bob so now we've got bob with his little tentacles moving so it it kind of brings the little sprite to life more or less so what we're after doing using very very little code now is we're after getting a sprite on screen and we've got him animating and remember we can also 
change the sprites color to whatever color we want we can change the background color to whatever color we want we can make it, these colors cycle if we so wish and um, we can position the sprite wherever we want on screen now so the next thing that would be nice to do is to get him to move around some kind of a way not even using a joystick or anything for the moment but just to get him to move around ever so little and the way I managed to get that to happen is again the same code as we had before to get our sprite animation there's nothing changed there everything is the same the only thing I changed that is that the player zero x position and the player zero y position before were set to 50 each I've now set them to the variable b and what I've done is I've just set that b equals b plus one so the x position and the y position are values that will change with every cycle so therefore Bob's position on screen should change with every cycle as well and once we've compiled that code what we get is we get an animated and moving Bob on the screen now there are a few little bits to iron out because as you see when he goes off the bottom of the screen he takes a little while before he comes back on again so it'd be nice to get him to smoothly move across but that's something that we look at in the next episode so what I would like to do is in the next episode we'll get our little player one sprite here or player zero as it's called in Batari basic moving around with our joystick and we'll see how we can lock him into the screen so that he can't go off screen the way he is here or how we can get him to smoothly go off screen and come on screen more or less immediately afterwards also I'd like to look at placing a second sprite of a different color and different shape on screen and applying a little bit of co collision detection so that if they touch the score here can increase or I don't know it can display game over or something like that just to get a little bit of kind of gaminess coming into this whole thing so that's that's pretty much it I hope you have enjoyed this so far I hope you've learned something from it all the links you could possibly need are in the description below take a look if it interests you I'm having an awful lot of fun with this and I intend to continue with it so we'll talk to you in the next episode and until then take very good care of yourself see you then bye bye